Shoot assaults and secures key objectives for follow on military Dude, what are they operations. Where? Whoa, 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 go back really quick. Go back really quick. All right, y'all. Welcome back to Coming Arms Channel. Okay, so we're checking out another video with Nico. This one is also from General Discharge. Now, this one is about the 82nd Airborne and the 101st Airborne. So, we've checked out the video that they did previously on the 10th Mountain Division. So, it's kind of cool to get like a little trip down memory lane. And of course, we're going to be, I'm going to be rocking the 10th Mountain stuff. So, this is my battalion hoodie and then also my division hat so yeah we're gonna be rocking that might get a little defensive if they start hyping up these units a little bit too much but yeah it should be cool so let's check it out let's check them what's out. up everyone check General out it Discharger. again today's video is going to be discussing the united states army's 82nd and 101st airborne divisions the 82nd and 101st both have extensive Mother histories fuckers. Them. you're probably familiar with their badges if not we got you this is the Who is this? <laughs> no, pause that. That was hold up. That is a fucking halo jump. That's a fucking that's not a goddamn fucking 82nd jump, okay? That's nice. This is 82nd. That shit with yeah, the fucking static lines them. Hundred and firsts. Headquartered in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, the 82nd Airborne Division is the U.S. Army's most strategically mobile division, capable of responding anywhere in the world in just 18 hours. Yeah, yeah. Headquartered yeah, that's in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, the 101st Airborne Division, <laughs> not... also referred to as the Screaming Eagles, is the U.S. Army's only air assault division. It's technically not an airborne division, despite its name. Or an they have been yeah, referred to fired. as the tip of the spear, as well as the most potent and tactically mobile U.S. Army division. Needless to say, they're both good at what they do. These divisions. Why do we get hyped up like this? I know, like divisions. this is actual training. But they do have some differences between them. You learn Why about they lie about us? Them? Well, here's the thing: like they're showing oh. all this this footage, and after you get past the static line stuff, everything is the same, dude. I mean, they're even showing these dudes in like old like IOTVs and whatnot, so. Yeah. <laughs> Air assault so school and much more. Sit back, relax, They're doing and enjoy the video. and shit though, at least. Uh, we were just running around in fucking mountains. <laughs> fucking with BFAs on. For real. It's like all privates in our video. God damn, bro. Before we jump into it, make sure to take a moment and show us some love and support by liking our video and subscribing to our channel. Uh, yeah, likewise. Your support is our lifeblood. Do not hesitate to ask us questions in the comments section below. But they got the shoot house and stuff too. Everything. Before we jump into the present day, let's give a quick history lesson on both of these divisions. We're just scratching the surface here though. The history behind both of these is astonishing. Let's oh start with God, the 82nd. The 82nd the division was constituted in the <laughs> National know. Army I mean, this is not 82nd, 1970. Bro. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying to snipe the patches and it's kind of seeming like... So, man... It oh, that like, is 82nd, bro. Look at the patch. Yeah. I mean... This but look at what he's wearing now. These have to be fucking privates, dude. Right. These like, have to be absolute privates. <laughs> how, well, here. How, how old is this video? Let's see. 2021. Oh, so. you fucking motherfucker. So this is actually fairly new, but I don't, these have to be privates because 82nd is probably the most fucking funded division yeah. right now outside of all soft units. Yeah, like, you'd have people rocking some better helmets than that. And then these guys still have like old like UCP, like Gen 2 IOTVs or something. Or, <laughs> or these dudes just haven't deployed yet. And this is garrison. For those of you yeah. who don't know, when you're like in garrison, which means you're not deployed, you just have to use shitty equipment. You have to be <laughs> bulky plate carriers. And then right before you deploy, you get all this cool shit. You get new mm -hmm. pants, helmets, fucking shiny, sometimes shiny new weapon systems and shit <laughs> that you haven't trained with, but right. you get them for deployment. And I'm like, is this for pictures? Like, where was all this shit before? Exactly. And you got to return all of it when you get back. And so then it looks all shitty like this. This is what's all different colors and stuff. <laughs> Your back is all and fucked up with the old ITVs. August 25th, yeah. 1917, at Camp Gordon, Georgia. Since its initial members came from all 48 states, the unit acquired the nickname All American which is the basis for its famed it's a cool name. shoulder patch. So In August sexy. 1942, it was reconstituted as the first airborne division of the U.S. Army and fought in numerous campaigns during the Second World War. The 82nd has been a part of several major conflicts. However, they did not participate in the Korean War, as both Truman and Eisenhower chose to yeah. keep it in strategic They're reserve scared. in the hmm. event of a Soviet ground attack anywhere in the world. Now let's go over the 101st. 
Established in 1918, the 101st Division was first constituted as an airborne unit in 1942. During World War II, it was renowned for its role in D-Day, as well as the Battle of the Bulge. During yeah, so, what is it, um, what is that, what is that show that everybody watches from World War II? Band of Brothers. That's Band 101st, of Brothers. isn't it? I don't know if I'm being honest with you right now. They're about to get upset. Right <laughs> I, I watch the Pacific way more than I watch Band of Brothers, to be honest. <laughs> so I, I think I'm that's fucking about 101st. Sorry. So you can, <laughs> okay. you can probably ahead. get a good familiarization with the 101st, I think, just by watching that. But so, And the, here's the thing, too, is I'm not going to lie. Like the, the 101st and the 82nd probably have the richest histories in the military, yeah. even yeah. Out in, like when it comes to like soft, too. Um, but like a rich history is 82nd. I don't think that one like can compare to any other. Yeah, they've been around for a while. I know like with 10th Mountain, 10th Mountain came around during World War II, but they didn't really do anything during World War II because it was so late mm -hmm. in the game. They weren't really used. So Not at all. they have that going for them. Vietnam War, the 101st Airborne Division fought in several major campaigns and battles. In 1974, it was redesignated as an Air Assault Division. Since then, it has been a part of many major conflicts in U.S. military history. All right, now that you got a quick snapshot of both of these oh divisions' God. histories, let's go back to the present day. Okay, so we said that both of these are airborne infantry, <laughs> but what's the main oh difference God. between the two? In the 82nd, soldiers mainly jump out of planes and are paratroopers. Yeah, he kind of already said it. First, soldiers are repelling out of helicopters. So the 82nd focuses on parachute assault operations, and the 101st focuses on air assault operations. Okay, okay. let's be real. So you went to air assault, I went to like the Marine Corps equivalent. You're not going to be repelling into any sort of combat environment at all. So like that sort of you're, aspect of it is like not really coming into play there. You're like, you're not going to be, you know, repelling in the fucking nothing unless you're quite literally soft right now or if some shit <laughs> like kicks off. Uh, or you're doing training. Um, the only time I've ever done any um, air assault stuff actively, actively was all outside of the military. Everything, every time <laughs> I did a fast road or like, you know, just regular repairing was all outside of the military doing like search and rescue stuff or doing like, uh, you know, other stuff through the government. Um, Honestly, yeah. I, I think like the Marine Corps is pretty good with like air assault too because we did like a crap ton of fast roping and if we didn't do fast roping we'd take our ospreys and just land them in so that's kind of like air salty too i guess but he's saying here repelling that's not really going to be utilized yeah pretty maybe much during like like training and stuff like that but, yeah and here let's clear this up too so yes 82nd originally <laughs> a full airborne unit 101st originally an airborne unit then 101st turned into a like fucking air assault unit for all of you to hear this right now okay they are just conventional military units one being airborne specifically would be the 82nd 101st is literally just a conventional unit yeah they send people to air assault school but they're keeping the history and tradition alive by saying it's like a fucking air yeah. assault unit so yeah, don't get like it twisted i see a lot of you in the comments <laughs> who are like oh no that's not true 101st is a uh, for air assaulting and repelling into buildings and i'm like <laughs> into buildings <laughs> every 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 unit does that every unit has somebody who can who can do that and has done that via mm -hmm. training but actively no it only only training that's it yeah and again you see it with 10th mountain they're not really a mountain unit anymore we're definitely not yeah. doing any skiing in fort polk <laughs> perfect no yeah 10 mountain Let's is not what that the u.s army says about their missions for the 82nd Airborne, it strategically deploys and Damn, conducts forcible entry parachute assaults and secures key objectives for follow-on military Dude, what are they operations. Wearing? Whoa, 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 go back really quick, go back really quick. Look at their shoes, bro, wait, hold up. I think these are like old dudes with new dudes and like old footage with new footage because they're wearing like Merrill's or Solomon's He's got or like, bro. this dude's got like, it looks like a PSQ-20 battery pack. So it's like pretty new system, but. For those of you who don't know, that's like, night vision shit yeah it's like the the cool higher speed stuff yeah but he's got like the old uniforms and the old 
Maybe but it's just for the get, rotation. They're like, don't use your good shit. Yeah, maybe like, or th no, they're definitely not up for. I don't know what's going on Objectives here. Objectives for follow-on military operations might just be old. No, they are doing interests. Well, they're in the, the box. Also, does some aerosol yeah, missions yeah, right. at times, such as doing training with the Osprey. They mainly utilize C-17 planes to Osprey. parachute out. Bro, they, they hey, nah, we not using Ospreys, bro. Yeah, I've never seen the Ar army utilize army Osprey. Army not ever. using them shits, bro. <laughs> That's strictly a fucking. Marine Corps thing, dude. I mean, even well, I'm at JBLM, but I haven't even seen an Osprey since I was in the Marine Corps, to be honest. So I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm out of the loop, but we'll I've not seen that. that a bit. Did you know General Discharge has a YouTube membership? Join with by the join button <laughs> next to Copenhagen. What was that? Today. Now back. To the <laughs> The 101st Airborne Division provides an unmatched expeditionary air assault capability to conduct forcible entry and other worldwide unified land operations in support of combatant commanders. It has its Combat Aviation Brigade, which is the most decorated aviation unit in the United States Army. Hmm. The Combat Aviation Brigade. Oh, here we go. Here's the new shit. Look at this funding right here. Since the they got razors and everything. Bro. I know. I saw that was rolling out. So, for those of you who aren't picking up <laughs> these things, we're, we're noticing it. This shit. Is a lot newer, and let me tell you something. When we're talking about funded units, when we said 82nd is very funded, this is what we're talking about. Normal conventional units do not fucking have these. We're still using Humvees, and even though 82nd is technically a fucking regular conventional unit, they are probably riding the line nowadays. Like, let's talk about, like, modern-day shit. They're riding the line between being conventional and soft so that's special operations forces and stuff because mm -hmm. they work so in sync now i mean 82nd now y'all get issued fucking patagonias for downrange yeah i that's, mean and they're deploying all the time shit. so it's easy for them to get a lot of the stuff i mean they even have like camo nets for these things too yeah camo nets <laughs> so i mean the discipline is there too so i guess that's kind of good to see yeah yeah. Almost every major conflict since the Vietnam War, flying fight. hundreds of thousands of hours, transporting millions of troops, and holds a record for the longest air assault in history. That night may be familiar with like the helicopters it crap. uses. It uses the Apache Doo -doo attack peaks, helicopter, bro. Chinook, Black oh, Hawk, and the Kiowa. Okay, so you have a pretty good overview of what both the 82nd and 101st Divisions are, their history, and what they do. But what training do you need? Keeping it oh, as basic as possible, yeah. as a multitude of MOSs can serve in these divisions, you'll need to either go to the Army Airborne Jump School or the Air Assault School. Finishing Jump School gets you this, and finishing Air <laughs> Assault School gets you this. Jump School is three weeks long, yes. whereas the Air Assault School is ten days. However, it's been said that those are the ten toughest days okay. in the US okay. Army. So <laughs> if I'm being honest, bro, okay. like fucking, yes, those are the two different bran like branches, First of all, for those of you in the comments as well who see the fucking uh, air, the parachute, the jump wings, that does not mean they're an 82nd Airborne. Because I see people who <laughs> like do yeah, stolen Valor pictures, and they'll be like, <laughs> "Oh, look at look at his jump wings. He's he has a fucking 10th Mountain Patch on, but that's only for the the 82nd." And I'm like, "It's mm -hmm. a school, dude. Right, it's right. a school." But to clarify for those of you who aren't aware. You have to complete fucking jump school in order to be in the 82nd. But you don't have to be air assault qualified to be in the 101st. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, I think they get pretty backed up too. I, I, know, I know they're doing like air assault all the time, so I'm sure they get their guys through eventually. But, they are. They are. But it, it, it will make it a purpose to get you in the uh, air assault school and get yeah. you your fucking So shit. that is a pretty cool thing. I mean, 10th Mountain is pretty good about going to air assault, but these guys are constantly going through. Sometimes it's kind of yeah. a pain in the butt to get some guys through in 10th Mountain. And only about half of those who begin it, yeah. graduate. We've done a video on jump school before, Look at so that. if you want to know more about that, Jesus Christ, that. bro. Let's briefly go over air assault school. In air assault school, you will be trained in air assault operations, sling load operations, and sure, some air assault it stuff. is designed to prepare soldiers for insertion, <laughs> evacuation, and pathfinder okay. missions that call for the use of multi-purpose transportation <laughs> and assault helicopters. Air assault yeah. also focuses on the mastery of repelling techniques and sling load procedures. All in all, your training will be- Dude, oh my, the there's no way! Oh, that is, no, 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 no! Okay, that's Oh, right. run that back! Okay. Run that back, let me see that shit. That might be 82nd. That might be 82nd. That could... Yeah, huh? It could be 82nd. Well, it looks like something. NTC or something. Yeah. Or that's probably group about to go kill all of them. <laughs> In Miles Gear. <laughs> yeah. Your training will be broken into three phases, each lasting three days. 
combat assault phase, sling load phase, and repel phase. On graduation day, you'll go on a 12 mile rucksack march. I know you did a video all about march, this one. You'll earn your wings as an official air assault soldier. Upon graduation of the course, you will be able to perform skills required to make maximum use of helicopter assets and training and in combat to support unit operations. So from your perspective, do you think, okay, what percentage do you think of the stuff you learn in air, air assault school is actually like pertinent, stuff that you would actually use. Because like sling loads, I can't imagine infantry would actually utilize that too much after the course, but I'm not really too sure. So um, kind of like what I talked about for like y using my like training. So what I talked about when it comes to like actually utilizing the skill, I used a lot of it outside of the military. Okay. Um, but if we want to dive into like in the military, air assault shit, it was it, for the sniper and regular platoon. It was very convenient mm -hmm. because it allowed us to build uh, better hide sites, serve sites, and stuff like that. Because there would be there was times where we were like repel off the side of the building and actually be on the side of the mountain, right? Um, but we couldn't get on the backside or go around the mountain. Very <laughs> yeah, okay. gotcha. So okay. it, it, there was cool things about it, and then sling load operations. It was kind of cool um, because we did utilize some of that, and then. The mm -hmm. battalion commander would be like, oh, who's like, you know, <laughs> okay. this, need assistance. And then you could be the one hero who's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. I'm doing, Sergeant Major. Like, you know. That makes sense. So in the Marine Corps, we don't have air assault school. We have something called Hearst Master, which is helicopter rope suspension techniques. So that's where you go and learn how to do all the repel setups and the fast rope setups and also spy rigging, which is when you're hanging. Nice spies and fries. And you guys doing do, that stuff. So I, I went, say, you guys do some cool spies and fries. Yeah, I went through that, but I didn't do any of the sling load stuff. So it didn't actually transfer over. But I'd say I, we did one fast rope and then I'd never use any of the stuff. I learned like the knots and I use that for like my repelling now. But other than that, it doesn't really, it doesn't really get utilized. So for, and then outside the military, I actually used a lot of shit from air assault school in like search and rescue stuff. And then some other government stuff like mm -hmm. uh, when I was working with like FEMA or, you know, like the state of Texas, Florida, yeah. or uh, I went to do SAR for Hurricane Maria and I'm repelling, we're repelling out of helicopters. We're yeah. getting people off of roofs. Like it's really, really cool shit. And it was all stuff I learned at aerosol school. And it's all simple stuff right. because you'll meet people like in the civilian sector, like police officers, firefighters and all this shit, but they have like actual like harnesses and everything yeah. to go like do shit. And yeah. we had lost, they had uh, for like, Maria and stuff, they had lost crates of this equipment. Um, or sorry, in other parts of where I was doing search rescue, they had lost like crates of like all these harnesses and stuff. So we're like, I was like, why don't you guys just tie like or a Swiss Kelsey, seat? Yeah. Like, what, <laughs> there you go. What, what's that? And I'm like, bitch, give me some rope. I'll make a seat and I'll repel right. down and get these people. I can, I can do it. And yeah. you just, you're the fucking, you're just a badass. They're like, oh my God, they can really do anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like 22 years old. I'm like, dude, I'm a fucking boss, dude. I got this shit. Right. You just get but used yeah. to doing a lot with like very minimal stuff. And there you go. You now have a decent idea of what the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions are. You know the main difference between the two, their missions, and some of the training you'll need to do. Be prepared to have some bad knees if you become a parachute. <laughs> jumping puts some wear and tear on them. Nice. So with all that said, which one do you prefer? The 82nd or the 101st? Let us Ooh, know in yeah, the which one you guys below. prefer. Let's know in the comments. Video on Army hmm. Airborne Jump School. The link for that will be in the description below. And if you're interested in other videos about the Army, we got some for you. On screen are all the videos we've done on the mm -hmm. Army. The link to the playlist will be in the- Yep, so we were gonna check out the 10th Mountain one. So this one was kind of cool. Now, from cool. your perspective, if you could be a part of one of these units, what would you choose? Oh God, okay, so well, here, here's the question. Okay. I know we didn't get to talk. Well, that's easy, actually. If I had to pick one of these two, it'd <laughs> okay. be the fucking 82nd. Because like I said, you guys got new bump helmets. You guys got new fucking night vision, new mm -hmm. fucking everything, bro. Y'all guys got literally all the good shit. <laughs> 101st is a fucking the mutt. It's like the fucking yeah, run to the litter that nobody wants, if we're being honest here. Um, it's, it's a hard call for me. So I first of all, Screw jumping out of planes. Like, I'm totally fine with being a leg, as we call it. Just normal light infantry guy. So I'd probably choose 100 first just because of that. But also, like, Fort Campbell's where they, they're at, which is pretty cool from what I hear. So that'd be kind of sick, too. But I kind of like helicopters. I like to stay, stick around helicopters. Jumping I out of planes is not my thing. So that's yeah, where I would sit. Yeah, no, I'd, yeah, I'd have to choose fucking 80 seconds. Yeah, sure. their, their budget is solid, and they're always deploying always deploying so, i wouldn't say as much yeah. as 10th mountain 
or just as much? What do you th- what do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Now I would say it's about even. I mean, I've seen Tenth Mountain, and I know buddies from Tenth Mountain who are still deploying and doing stuff, but I, it's going to be kind of hard to tell now with Afghanistan going away and whatnot. But fuck. Speaking of, bro, this is right when the Marine Corps was kicking up and deploying a little bit more, and then the yeah. shit kicked off, and now we're pulling out. Marine Corps, <laughs> y'all were about to have it back, dude. Y'all were about to actually Marine Corps. You motherfucker, you well, Marine. That's the um, thing. It's, it's a tricky thing with the Marine Corps, too, because, like, they have the Marine Expeditionary Unit, which is where, like, the battalions would get assigned to. And those are the guys that really get relied upon. Those and, like, the special purpose mag task, which is, like, the crisis response people. But yeah. other than that, like, if you're not on one of those rotations, you're just going to get sent to, like, Europe, like Romania or Australia or something and do something like that. So well, it depends. Yeah. You hear the Marines all the time, and the dude, the kids who want to grow up to be Marines are just like, you know, like, oh, they deploy, they, they fight, they kill everything. I'm like, yeah, they're, they're where fucked. y'all been deploying to, bro? I ain't seen y'all on shit when I've been downrange, bro. It's Not the inside. brainwashing, dude. It's all the brainwashing. Dude, brain, you see the commercials. It's cool though. There, I will tell everybody this, and uh, it is very true. I'll always be honest. Is Marines are definitely the proudest branch, and I will give that to them one one hundred percent. Dude, if they uh, weren't, then I don't know what they're doing because like they be they just put so much money into like the advertisement, getting that image out there and whatnot. So you gotta have that brainwashing going. But yeah, now that was your chance though. That they were about to actually start y'all were about to start deploying a lot more and shit, bro. Yeah. And then y'all would have been able to actually come back and be like, we're deploying on time, and the army would have been like, Oh this fucking motherfuckers gonna take all the shit. My last infantry battalion just deployed to Kabul, so I'm kind of butter I didn't get to be a part of that, but yeah, uh, they're staying busy. I, I think our guys will stay busy doing something, but it's probably going to be stuff that's not as sexy, like going to Europe or something, which is kind of cool, I guess. No, that's bullshit, though, bro. I'm trying to get into <laughs> shit, dude, because we just had two teams. Um, we had a team go to Kuwait. Mm-hmm. We had a team go to uh, Syria. From and there. then we have a team that was in Afghanistan. I'm not tracking if they're back or not yet from that. Because okay. for all of you who think that we're like pulled out of Afghanistan, it's not 100% case. There's little trails of us there. <laughs> little, yeah. I can yeah. speak on that. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Okay. Well, that was a cool video. Again, I don't, I don't really know. I think they're about both cool units. They get better money than most of the other infantry units in the Army. But if you're not part of like 10th Mountain, 82nd, 101st, like, come on. Yeah, it's kind of you're kind of doo doo cheeks at once. Unless, <laughs> unless you have a really cool MOS or you're soft. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, for sure. Really cool Bro, uh, we're gonna have to hit up this fucking Delta Force versus Dev Group thing one of these days. Oh my like, gosh, dude, what, we, what do you think the comments are gonna be like though? <laughs> it's all the kids are gonna be like, oh my god, this. What is a Delta Force? <laughs> and then they're also gonna be like, SEAL Team Six is the best. And I'm gonna be like, fuck you, little ass kid. Yeah. Wrong. <laughs>